but if you're if you're in a quiet place, feel free to unmute yourself and 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 join in and preach with me, yeah. If that's all right. Hi, Ruth. I saw you say hi there. Um, I just want to say before we start anything, like one, um, I believe that the time we spend uh, seeking God or going after God or joining these meetings is never in vain, right? Um, sometimes it can be real easy to get caught up in uh, in the things we're doing, right? Um, the whole Martha Mary syndrome, if you will, right? Where you're just doing, doing, doing in the name of God, but you never take the time to sit down and, and be fed by him or, or hear what he has to say or just fellowship with him, right? Um, uh, and for me too, it's, it's, I see a lot of the leaders on here, uh, leaders of the clubs on campus, not just the, the, the e-boards, but the ambassadors, and then also some, some members. And I pray that uh, what I'm coming to share with you guys really does impact you and touch you. Um, I don't know, maybe if you're close enough to me, you, you know some of this stuff, but it's like, I don't like, I don't like having meetings for the sake of having meetings. You can ask Prince, like, if there's a church meeting, and I don't have to be there, and, like, we're not, like, we're not moving or advancing in some way, I'm, I might try and opt out, you know. But um, with that said, um, I pray that as you're listening to what I'm sharing, uh, you're able to decide something in your mind, right? You're able to make a decision that will, that will change your life positively. Uh, when we even look at the word repentance, right, it means it's changing your mind. When you repent, you change your mind. When you come to Christ, you change your mind, right? And from those decisions that you made years ago, maybe some of you years ago, maybe some of you days ago, maybe some of you a couple of hours ago, whatever, right? You're, you're living your life based off of those decisions. And so whenever you get into a, a, a group like this, whether it's campus ministry, uh, I don't know how I many of you guys have home self ministries or small groups at your churches, make it a point to be like, say, what am I deciding, right? What am I leaving this meeting with in my mind? And then also how am I internalizing it to be able to give to somebody else, right? There's a verse in the Bible that says that he gave, he, he gave us the apostles, preachers, and pastors, and everyone to equip the saints for the work of ministry, right? And so when we gather here like this, if you're not the one speaking, you're the next minister up, right? You're the one who's supposed to actually carry the message and go and solve someone's problem, right? So today I pray that we all just become a solution by what I share, amen? Amen. Amen, that makes sense to everybody. Okay, good, so y'all, y'all gonna have to help me. If you have your Bibles, uh, turn them on or open them up and, and I'm gonna do a little bit of, of a teaching here, I think tonight, and then I think we'll pray and and see what God does, yeah? Okay, so um, if, you want, if, you, if you want for titles and stuff, you can write, to be blessed, to be blessed, to be blessed. Everybody's looking super comfortable. Docs, I sit up. <laughs> Let's turn to Psalm 1, verse 1 and 2. We're going to break some things down tonight, I think, and... and I think it will help us a lot in life. Because everybody talks about be blessed, be blessed. How you doing? I'm feeling blessed. But what does blessed even look like? <laughs> what does blessed really mean? You know? Some of us Christians, we've been using Christian lingo for too long. And we don't get it. Okay. Psalm 1, verse 1 through 2. I'll read it. it says, bless the ESV version. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, no, it sits in the seat of scoffers, but, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. Okay. I want us to read it again. Let's really look at it. And then we're going to study a little bit tonight. Psalm 1, 1 through 2. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. So right there, we see what the blessed man doesn't do, right? But it says, but, and then this is the part we have to pay attention to. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law, he meditates day and night, okay? And so when we look at those scriptures, uh, we see that the blessed person, 
according to Psalm 1, verse 1 and 2, does mainly two things, right? So we're talking about to be blessed. What does it actually mean to be blessed besides God's favor on you? What does it mean to be blessed? This scripture is showing us that you can do things to cultivate being blessed. Sometimes as Christians, we like to take a real passive approach to stuff, right? The day you get saved, you think everything is grave. You don't have to work <laughs> nothing out. But there's scriptures like these that show you how to get those things, right? If you want to be blessed, if you want God's favor, this scripture shows us two things. It says, delight in the law of the Lord. And I'm sure all of us can understand that the, the law of the Lord is his word. Right, what God says, what God says in His text, right? What what Scripture says to you, and it says meditate. Okay, meditate on those things, and 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 I know sometimes in in our regular daily lives we talk about delight ourselves in the Lord, read the Word, and meditate. Like these aren't these are new concepts to us, right? If you want to know God, read His Word. Right? But we're talking about this, this aspect of blessing and, and delighting in the word. Sometimes it's not every day you'll read uh, uh, numbers and get excited. Uh, sometimes you don't read Deuteronomy and you, and you like it. It don't, no, you know. But there are scriptures that when, when you read or that you have read, God has touched those already on your life. There are scriptures that all of us have come across at one point or another where we know, like, you know, without a shadow of a doubt, God breathes on my spirit to understand this one thing, right? And it's, and it's, and it's times where you, you're not finding anything or you feel like God's not speaking. You can go back to those scriptures, okay? Go back to those things that he said. Those are the things you should be feeding on. Those are the things that you should delight yourself with, right? If you're, if you're, if you're struggling to read your Bible, Right? Go back to where he spoke to you. Go back to the last time you saw God in the word and eat that word again. Go back to that place where you were sitting and the presence came once you read that scripture. And those are the things that you can delight yourself in, in his promises and what he spoke to you personally and privately. Right? Sometimes uh, me personally, I like the behind the scenes. I like experiencing God for myself before any platform, before any state, before any YM big meeting or anything like that. Because what you cultivate privately is what will come out publicly. If you're, if you're, if you're one to say, oh, I know I have to read my Bible. I know I'm supposed to read scripture, but you, you haven't found that sweet spot in scripture for you yet. Yes, there, everything is good in the Bible. Everything is for, for us to understand, to read, to gain knowledge, and, you know, to be able to teach. But there are things that apply to you yesterday, today, and tomorrow. There were things that you did yesterday that God wants to talk to you about. There are things that you're doing now God wants to talk to you about. There are things that you'll do tomorrow that God wants to talk to you about. Right? And if you're struggling to find something to capture you, go back to the last place you saw him. Go back to the last place you read his word and, and it touched you. And then begin to meditate on those things. Go back and meditate on those things. And when I say meditate, I mean brood over them. Yeah? So the same way we, we uh, uh, some people think of it this way. You can, you can um, if you have the energy or the muscles to worry, use that same muscle to meditate on something else. Okay? In Philippians, God even tells you what to think about. So you can flip there and look it up. But there's, there's an aspect of dwelling on the word of God that will begin to change our lives, okay? And when, what, what happens is that as you read the word and you meditate on it, you're forcing your mind to make different connections. When we're in the world, we had a certain mindset, right? Ah, uh, God, thank you. And that's why when you repent, you change your mindset. And it says in Romans 12 too, that you should be renewed in your mind. Why? So that your life can be transformed. And if we're talking about all this in the context of the blessed man, we're saying the blessed man has made decisions to delight himself in God's word. Words God has spoken to happy himself in God's word, to find the places in the word, ah, oh God, where his spirit 
it is one with God, where God is speaking to his soul and his spirit, and things change. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? And we're saying the blessed man meditates. He makes a conscious decision and effort to say, today, this is what I'm thinking about. Mm. I have friends, some of them are on this line. If you talk to them too much, you'll, you'll, all scriptures will come out because that's what they're thinking about. They're tying scriptures to the food they're going to eat, the, uh, the work they're about to do, the job they're about to get. But it's all because they're meditating. They've made up their mind that this, this is what I'm going to think about. This is what I've placed my thoughts on. This is where my attention is. And those are the, the aspects of a blessed man. Okay, um, today, tonight, I think the word is short, but I, I really want us to be able to grasp this because I think uh, by the end of this, you'll see how you can apply it to this time um, in this season where, you know, we're all kind of stuck at home. Some of us are cheating a little bit. Some of y'all are doing some secret worship gatherings and whatnot in your places, but we won't tell it to nobody, right? But there's an aspect of the blessing that we have to cultivate in this time in this season. Let's go to Jeremiah 17, 7. I want us to read that. Also talking about the blessed person. If you're there, unmute yourself and say, yeah, yeah. So I know if you're there or if you're texting. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that yeah, was there. Yeah. Okay. I need a couple more yes. Angie, are you there or what are you doing? Yeah. Girl? Okay, okay. All right. I think so. Yeah. Uh huh. Y'all, uh, these aren't rhetorical questions. I beg. Okay. All right. So Jeremiah seventeen seven. This is what my version says. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. Some versions say, confidence is in the Lord. Some versions say, hope is the Lord. Okay, I'll read it one more time. Write this down if you're taking notes. Jeremiah 17, 7. Blessed is the man who trusts, who trusts in the Lord, whose trust or hope or confidence is the Lord. When the first time I read that, or, or after reading a couple of times, I realized that that scripture is saying two things, Okay. And it will take other scriptures for you to be able to understand it. But if we're still talking about the blessed man, we're still talking about the blessed man, the one who's meditating on the word, the one who is uh, making himself excited and happy by reading God's word. He said, blesses him who trusts in the Lord. And then whose trust is the Lord. Okay, when we look at the word trust, it's your ability to believe or rely on something right? Uh, your ability to believe or rely on the truth of, of the thing you're putting your weight on, right? And, and your trust of something can de be developed by the truths you know about uh, a person or a thing, okay? And so what, what we're essentially saying is that in order to be able to trust, right, and we're talking about God in this context, in order to be able to trust God, you have to know something, you have to know something. You have to understand the truths about God. You have to be able to understand and learn things about God in order to be the blessed person. The blessed person is a productive person. And we'll see that as we keep reading. But the blessed person uh, uh, trusts. That means he, 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 he's not just... Uh, uh, sitting down and understanding, but trust can be a verb. Trust means you're taking action. Trust means that you're putting your weight behind whatever you said or whatever, whoever said what they said. Trust means that when, when someone says something, you believe it. So you take action. If God told me today, which stock to invest in, am I going to put all my money in there or am I going to put a dollar in there? And I promise you guys, God does talk about money. He does talk about money. But do you trust him? Do you know that he's your provider? Do you know the scripture that, um, that, that refers to? Do you know what God says about your life? Do you know what God says about situations? Do you know anything about God's character? 
For you to be able to say you trust God means that you have to understand truths about God because trust is a verb. If you're going to say you trust someone, you're going to be willing to move. You're going to be willing to to act. You're going to be willing to do things where people say that uh, this is not the will of God, or maybe you should do this, you should do that. You can go back and say, this is the truth about the one who called me. This is the truth about the word he gave me for my life. And that's when you can move. And that's how you display that you trust God. Does that make sense to everyone? The second half of that, this is the part that, that touches me. It says that not only is the best man the one who trusts the Lord, thank you, God, but whose trust is the Lord? Not just that you trust in God, but your trust is God. Ah, God. It's like if you had an anchor in a ship and your ship is moving some way, basa basa, going everywhere. Jesus is not just the one who will provide your anchor, but he is your anchor. Oh, God. That level of trust and understanding that and deciding that as a blessed person, if I make my anchor him, not what he gave me, but him. If, if he gave me his word, if he gave me his word, and John says that he is the word, ah, uh, then what do I have to be afraid of? He, that's when trust takes on another dimension. Because you understand not only will he provide for me, oh God, but he is my provider. Hey, not only will he provide for me, but he is the provider. Not only will he heal us, but he is the healer. Oh goodness. That's why you don't have to worry about anything. That's why if you seek him first, everything else will be added. Because he made everything else. The earth is his and the fullness thereof. But it says that the blessed person is the one who does that. Thank you, Jesus. I want to be blessed. I don't know about anyone else. We are blessed, but I want to be more blessed. I want to be more blessed. I want to get to the point where I'm delighting in his word, that in the midst of everything, I can't do the things I wanted to do. My situation might not look the way I want it to look like, but I will delight myself in the fact that I have words to meditate on that he spoke over my life and the fact that I can trust him and that he is my trust. The, the place where this took me to a whole nother level, if you guys think I'm excited now, you should have seen me when I was studying by myself, preparing and cooking this thing up. It says in Psalm 71 verse 5, for you, for you, O Lord, are my hope. Not I hope in you, but you are my hope, my trust, O Lord, from my youth. Sometimes when we're reading this Bible, guys, you, you, you have to understand you're on a, a treasure hunt. You're discovering things. Uh, God, God, oh God, in God's character is, is this. If you can understand this, your patience level will increase with God. God doesn't hide things from us, but he hides things for us. He says in his word that it's the glory of, 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 of a king to seek out a matter. He's not hiding it from you. He's hiding it for you. Because on the journey to understanding, he'll show you what's not him. He'll show you what is him. You'll be able to shed things from your mind and your life that you didn't need. And by the time you get there, you'll say, aha, I found it. I found my hope. Psalm 71.5, for you, O Lord, are my hope, my trust, O Lord from my youth it's as if god knew that there would be some young people one day looking for hope looking for trust looking for where to go looking for where to believe and he put this scripture in there for us it says from my youth when i read that i said no god this 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 is the word for tonight this is the word for tonight this is the word for tonight have you made him your hope have you made him your trust have you delighted yourself in his word? Have you been meditating on his word? And in all of those things, in order to be able to accomplish those things, we have to have knowledge. 
you have to have knowledge on what is true and what is not true. If we look at 2 Peter 1, verse 3 through 5, okay, it says this. For some of us who don't want to study, listen, studying school academics, I didn't like it that much. I'm not going to lie to you, okay? But if God Almighty says that we should study to show ourselves approved, well, who am I to, you know, say, oh, mm, pass, you know? And if you want to know God, this is what he says. This is not me. Second Peter 1, through, 1 verse 3 through 5. His divine power has granted us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Some people stop reading that scripture there at, at the comma. But there's a comma and finish it. It says, through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. Through what? The knowledge what do you know about God? We love saying this part. His divine, he, he granted us all things through life and God, his life and godliness. But what do you know about godliness? What do you know about life? What do you know about his word for that to work in your life? It says, through the knowledge of him who called, who called us, through the knowledge of him. The blessed man is the one seeking out this knowledge. The blessed man who is able to understand truths about God. Through the knowledge of him who called us his own glory and excellence. By which he has granted us his precious and very great promises. So that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature. Having escaped from the corruption that is in the world. Because of sinful desire. For this very, for this very reason... Make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue and virtue with knowledge. You can only trust God to the capacity you know Him. You can't trust something you don't know about. If you never knew God was a healer, you wouldn't be able to trust Him in healing you. You can only trust God to the capacity you know about. That is why testimonies are important because then you know that God has done this and you can place your trust there. But if you don't get into the word for yourself, especially in these times when we're at home by ourselves, and you don't get to know him, you can't trust him. And the thing is you can say you trust him, but your actions are speaking differently. And then we call ourselves blessed. Meanwhile, it tells us the blessed man does X, Y, Z. Are we doing X, Y, and Z? Or are we stopping at, I got my virtue, I'm saved, I'm blessed. Right? And we walk around, I'm blessed. How are you feeling? Blessed. Meanwhile, you haven't read your Bible for a week. How are you blessed? How? How are you blessed? You were blessed. How are you still how are you still being blessed? Uh, how are you still being blessed? Let's take it from here now. We're gonna go back to that Psalm 1, uh, verse 1 and 2, but now we're going to read verse 3. These are the results of becoming that blessed person. My goodness. Psalm 1, uh, verse 3. The blessed person, okay. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. A blessed person is, is prospering. A blessed person is being productive. I told you in the beginning, a blessed person isn't one who's just sitting down and being blessed, but he's prospering. He's producing. His life is not at a standstill. Whether there's corona or no corona, if you are blessed, you are, hey, if you are blessed, you are being productive. If you are blessed, you are prospering. There's no reason why you should just be alive. You should be thriving. If you are really blessed, something in your life is working. Hey, God, if you're blessed, something in your life is in motion. Because the person who called you in the beginning as the Alpha needs to see you and wobble your life so that you can see him become the Omega for you. Ah, 
There's a reason why he gave you words in the beginning because he knows things are going to happen in the middle. But that just means you have to get from the beginning to the end and go through the middle. And a blessed person is productive. A blessed person is flourishing. A blessed person is prosperous. It says yielding its fruit. Yielding its fruit. Let's go to Jeremiah 17 again. Now we're going to read the bottom of that, verse 8. What a blessed person is like. God is showing us that when you do these things, you become blessed. And from the first psalm that we read, Psalm 1-3, the result, he's showing us that we, we, we prosper. Blessed people prosper. We have to get to a point where we look at our lives and we audit ourselves. Am I prospering? If I'm not, let me go back and check why. It's not time necessary to beat yourself up, but there are principles God has given us. Do you trust and believe? How much do you know about what, about what your circumstance entails that you can go to God and say, God, I need help here. God, I need to change this. Jeremiah 17, 8. The blessed person, okay? He is like a tree planted by water. Again. God is referring to another tree planted by water. If you read Ezekiel, you'll understand that the water is from the throne of God. It says Jeremiah 17, 8. He is a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when he comes. For its leaves remain green and is not anxious in the year of drought. For it does not cease to bear fruit. It does not cease to bear fruit. That river, that, that, there's a river in Ezekiel, it says it comes from the sanctuary rather, okay? And, and Ezekiel says that he saw trees all around this river. And God is likening the blessed person to a tree planted by a river. And he says that that person who is blessed, the things we just talked about, he is planted, which means he's not going anywhere. No matter what's happening, nothing is happening to him. He's not shaking. It says that he's even spreading his roots. Roots are not seen. But it says that he's spreading his roots uh, 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 towards the stream. And if the stream is coming from the very sanctuary of God, my Bible also tells me that out of my belly shall flow live, rivers of living waters. Mm -hmm. And so the, if you're spreading your roots as the blessed person to, to, to the streams of God, you are making progress spiritually that nobody can see. But the day that your fruits start coming out, everyone will take notice. Nobody, everybody sees the fruit, but they don't see the roots. Everyone sees the fruit, but they don't see your roots. If your roots aren't deep, if your roots aren't reaching towards God, you have to question, how blessed am I? The blessed person is like a planted tree who is spreading roots, not just has roots, but his roots are spreading. You won't fear when he comes, he says. He says that you won't fear when heat comes, when the sun comes out, when everything is on fire. You're not even afraid. Not that you, 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 you won't be affected, but you're not even afraid. He says, your leaves remain green. Your leaves remain green. Your leaves remain green. You don't eat leaves, but leaves are also important. Leaves can provide shade. Leaves can uh, 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 protect the fruit. Le leaves are there to show you that something is coming, right? And, and when I thought about it, I was dwelling on the shade aspect of God. God says he will hide us under the shadow of the Almighty. Uh, people take cover under, un under shade. You know, uh, uh, his wings, you hide under his wings that provide shade. And the shade is symbolic of you being able to help other people. If you are blessed, you have to be blessed and blessed and blessed until you become a blessing. Isn't that what he told Abraham? Until you become a blessing. Do you have shade for people? Are you able to, to, to minister to people? People who aren't saved. People who don't know, they don't have the knowledge of God. They don't have these truths that we have. Are you able to extend your leaves to cover other people? Are you able to provide that shade? Are you a planted tree? It goes on to say that that blessed person is not anxious. I don't know if everyone saw this while I was reading it, but this is literally there. 
It says he's not anxious. Sometimes it, it, anxiety can get the best of us. But then if we go back to understand how, how to bless ourselves by the things we just talked about, you will realize once you're blessed, you don't have to be anxious. If, if I'm anxious about something, something is obviously off. I don't understand a truth about God. I haven't uh, meditated on that truth about God. I haven't sought counsel or something because this word is telling me that that's not God's will for my life. God's will for my life is not that I'm anxious. One thing that my dad said when I was younger that changed my life is that if it's not in the Bible, you don't have to believe it. If God didn't say that you will be anxious, you have to be anxious. I don't have to be anxious. And that's one truth that I have to hold on to because even in some uh, a season time past, I was going through it. I'm not going to lie. Only a few people know, but there were some serious attacks mentally that would bring me to a place where it's like, like what is happening? Am I going to go crazy? And I actively had people praying with me, praying with me not just by myself. We have to get away from this idea that Christianity is just my own thing. I'm going to walk it out myself, whatever. You need relationships. You need to get on lines like this, not because I want to promote myself for you guys, but because God puts words in people's mouths for us, for the greater good. Prince and I will text today, Psalms 133 says, how good is it and pleasing for brethren to dwell together because it's like oil dripping down the anointing when we gather like this things change things happen to me that don't happen to me in private things happen to you that don't happen to you in private and it says the blessed person is not anxious if you're feeling any form of anxiety get into a group and company of people you are comfortable with and pray with them get into the word of god and find out what truth god has for you concerning anxiety because I believe in what Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, be anxious for nothing. I gave you that for free. You don't even have to look it up. But be anxious for nothing is his will. And finally, it says that that blessed person does not cease to bear fruit. Even when the sun is out. Even when uh, things are going wrong. It says the blessed person ceases to bear fruit. That means he does not stop being productive. And that is the point I want to drive tonight. You don't have to stop being productive. If you do all of these things we just talked about, to cultivate the blessing of God for your life, you will not stop being productive. Whether you're in your house or out of your house, in season, out of season, the blessed person does not stop producing fruit. But you produce fruit at the rate of the depths of your roots. You do not have to stop being productive. Productivity does not mean that uh, uh, you're going everywhere, but you can be growing and being still. Bible says, be still and know that I am God. Listen, you can get to a place farther with God by being still than running with everywhere one else. You don't have to go anywhere to grow. You can be still and just know. Because as you're being still, he's downloading things into you. As you're being still, you're, you're getting to know the, the planner. You're getting to know the one who has paved the path for you. And so in this time, in this season where we're all home, we have to think about, am I being productive? Am I still bearing fruit? Not, am I still doing the same things I was doing? Because some of us, maybe you were going out, you were having preaching gigs, you were having worship, this, that, 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 and you can't do those. But the Bible says the blessed person does not cease to bear fruit. So what are you doing? What are you doing to cultivate your fruit? What are you doing to prepare yourself for the day where they say, okay, outside is open, y'all can come out. Do you have fruit to give? Do you have anything for us? Or should we just have left you inside? You know, so as we're talking about the blessed person, we have to look at our lives and say, something about me has to be productive. In this time, in this season, I will not lose my empowerment. 
I will continue to be empowered. Wherever I need to go, I will go there to be empowered. Wherever line I have to join, I will join the line to be empowered. I'm not saying run around, join every single prayer line because you do have to spend time with God by yourself. But the Bible is letting us understand that we don't have to stop being productive. Do not stop being productive. If you're on this line and you feel that like you've just become stagnant, uh, uh, because you're not going out anymore. You can still be growing. You can still be expanding your roots, stretching your roots towards the, the rivers of God. You can still, uh, the Bible describes the word as water and washing us. So you can still get into the word, but you have to enter the word. Let, let it let, develop a hunger for it, develop a desire for it, saying that I will happy myself in this word, like we talked about in Psalms that you're going to go deep into his word and you're going to let the word go deep in you. That you're not just reading the Bible, but you're allowing the Bible to read you. That you're, you're subjecting your mind and your thoughts to the will of God as you read. This is the way we change and this is the way we become the blessed person. This is the way we become the blessed person. And so now we can see that uh, in times like this, some people are still undercover. It looks like some people are still on the ground. You don't really hear from them much. You don't see much from them. But trust when this stuff is all over, you're going to see what they're doing. Some people, it's like, this is actually their season to flourish, where it's like, I've been planning my IG stuff. I've been planning all my social media stuff. And like, now everyone's home. Bet this is the time for me to do it. But it just goes to show you that the season, the, the, the ability to apply yourself in every season takes the wisdom of God because your drought season is, is a season for someone else where they're flourishing. People who aren't good with social media are not flourishing. People whose time for social media right now are flourishing. But there's coming a day too for you where you've been preparing yourself, that you've been stretching your roots, that you too will flourish and your fruits will show and your leaves will bring shade. But it comes from the place where you've determined that I am a blessed person, that I will be a blessed person. I will meditate on the word. I will think about it. I will delight myself in it. I will trust God. I will get to know him so that he can become my trust, so that he can become my hope. Is that making sense for anyone? If it makes sense for you, type, type amen so that I know that y'all understand what I'm saying. Someone say amen or bless you, bless you. And so if, if, if you guys are, are here tonight, a bunch of you are leaders and you've been paying attention and you've been understanding what I'm saying. Uh, I just want you guys to understand that for those of you who are leaders on here, there's coming a time where um, uh, your leadership will be pulled on. God was trying to tell me something about leadership today. I didn't really understand. I'm not going to lie to you. But I know that there are people on this line who are supposed to be leaders. And part of leadership is taking response, is not necessarily taking responsibility, but accepting responsibility. Okay, some of you guys, uh, it's like you you found your space, uh, you found your place in a leadership capacity. It's like you're, you're in a place and it's almost like you're leading, but you're not called the leader. Okay, or you're in a place and, and you're functioning as a leader, but no one really acknowledges you as the leader, or you don't see yourself yet as the leader. But in this time to be productive still and become blessed still, you can lead from the place where you are still. You can still give and contribute your ideas and you can lead from the back. Listen, the, 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 the greatest way almost to learn how to lead is by following because you see everything the leader is doing. And so if that's you on, on this line, uh, I just pray God continues to speak and work in your heart about that. There's, there's, there's something serious about leadership. And I don't think it's coincidence, too, that Prince, too, has been uh, bombarding our uh, group chats with, with, with books and, and stuff about leadership. Amen. But I know that uh, 
as far as YAM goes, there's, there's a grace on this ministry to really develop leaders and leadership uh, uh, capabilities and stuff like that. Um, I just want us to uh, uh, get into a bit of the Q&A stuff. Uh, I'm not personally probably going to answer any questions, but Prince, are you online still? Is Prince there? Yes, I am. Okay, so, uh, bro, do you want to do the, do, should we do the prayer session real quick, or do you yes, want to do yeah, the Q&A? Let's pray very quickly. Okay, me or you? No, you have the fire right now. Mm -hmm. Flow, flow, flow. <laughs> All right, guys. So, um, I want us to uh, uh, just take this time very seriously. Uh, one of the the things that I personally like is everyone still there? Hello. Hi. Yeah. Okay, my bad. Maybe it's me. But one thing that um I like or uh I get excited about is challenges. Is uh, times like this where it's like, oh man, like George is not here to really pray me into some another level like no one's here to lay hands on me like how like where the fire gonna come from god you know but it, it it shows me like like god you are so much with us knowing that if we can't meet in person and i still have to grow you're still gonna show up so the next prayer topics that we lift up i want you to get into the place where you're praying to god out of the sincereness of your spirit out of the depths of your soul, because no time should be wasted. No time should be wasted. And so you're praying right now, God, open my eyes. Open my eyes to the areas that I need to be productive in. Open my eyes to the truth of your word. Open my eyes so I can understand your word. There's a story in the Gospels where the two disciples after the resurrection of Jesus were actually walking with Jesus. And it says their eyes were closed to him. They didn't know it was him. But when he sat down with them and began to explain the word, the word explaining the word, imagine that. Jesus talking about himself to you. It says their eyes were open and their hearts began to burn. Oh, goodness. Their eyes were open and their hearts began to burn. We need to pray for that point where our eyes are open and we read the word and our hearts burn. We need to be able to see his plans and our hearts burn. That will give you the motivation to move because there's only, you, you can only sit down with fire in your chest for, for so long until you're consumed. So let's begin to pray right now. God, open my eyes. Open my eyes in this season. Open my eyes so I can know how I can be productive. Open my eyes to understand truths about you. Open my spiritual eyes to understand truths, God. Open my spiritual eyes to see you clear. Open my eyes to know where I'm supposed to be going. Open my eyes to understand what I'm supposed to be doing. Open my eyes, Lord Jesus. Open my eyes, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, open my eyes. Open my eyes. Lord, I want to see you clearer. I want to be able to see myself clearer. I want to be able to see what you are saying about me. Lord, I want to be able to see the areas of my life that need another word from you, that need to be impacted by your truths. Lord, whether it's my mind that's having anxiety, Lord, let me see your truths about what you say. Let me see the truths behind anxiety that you said I don't have to be anxious about any Thing, but let me be able to see it for myself so that my heart burns open my eyes god open my eyes open my eyes lord open my eyes open my eyes lord open my eyes open my eyes god open my eyes lord i don't want to leave here with my vision the same lord, I this call with my mind renewed because i saw you different because i decide today to be blessed i decide today to be blessed so my eyes will be be open. Lord, I have decided as the blessed person, I'm coming as many on your I speak into being tonight. 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 I speak into being
Amen. 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 Father, we thank you for tonight. Um, Asha, I want you to pray for anybody that might be experiencing any form of anxiety or health issue very quickly before we go to the next. Yeah. If, if, if you, uh, God, thank you. If you have any pain in your body right now, just place your hand on that area. If you have pain in your body right now, if you've been feeling anxious or you have anxiety, place your hand on your head. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Just go ahead and do that right now. Father, I thank you so much that Jesus died so that we can live. I thank you that he bore all of our sickness and our pain, all of infirmity, all of it, Jesus already dealt with it. So right now, oh, shut up. I command healing right now into every person on the line. I speak wholeness into their bodies right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every spirit of infirmity, every bodily ache, I command you out right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Wherever you are, receive the power of God. Receive the healing of God right now. I speak wholeness over your life. And I rebuke anxiety. I rebuke Rebuke anxious thoughts in the name of Jesus Christ. I see like uh, it's like anxiety is holding somebody's mind. Like it's like been playing with you. And tonight I command that thing to stop right now. And, and I just feel that you have to decide that you won't be anxious. You have to tell that thing to to go away, to tell it not to touch you in the night, that you have better things to meditate on. And so I rebuke the spirit of anxiety and I speak wholeness into the bodies of everyone who lying right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, wherever you are, if you have pain, go ahead and stretch it out, test it out or whatever you want to do. And, and then, uh, uh, God, thank you. Uh, feel free to text us your testimonies uh, after the Q&A session. Amen.